We constantly talk about and remind traders that stocks are not gonna go straight up, stocks are not gonna go down, straight down, they need to rest, they need to. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, bulls did great this week. Uh, earnings kicked off this week. Uh, if you look at uh, the final numbers, you'll see the NASDAQ uh, was obviously the big winner today, uh, this week. You had a big move up this week, 3.5%, almost 3.5%, despite uh, giving back today about 2% uh, gains. Uh, indexes did really, really well. Obviously, the, the catalyst behind this move in the last four or five days was obviously the remount, the reclaim over the 50-day moving average that started this move uh, to the upside. And like we talked about in last night's video, yes, some stocks, right? Some stocks got a little ahead of themselves, right? Amazons, if you look at anything that got taken down today very, very aggressively, well, those are the stocks that had big moves. You had Amazon taken down, right? NVIDIA taken down. All the names we, we talked about on, on uh, yesterday's video. But the most important part is, again, we're prepared in the mindset. We're, we're prepared in the idea of reality doesn't go straight up in a bull market. Reality doesn't go straight down in a bear market. There's always periods of time. And again, all you need to do is just go to last night's video to kind of uh, hear my thoughts going into uh, today's session. But if you look at how we closed, we closed very organically and that's the most important part, right? Here we have this big, big move, uh, and despite the nearly 2% decline today on the NASDAQ 100, all they did today was go right back to the five-day moving average, and if you look at every single time, this is kind of the whole point of technical analysis, look at what happened the last four times uh, we touched this orange line, which is the five-day, right? Touched, bounce, touched, bounce, touched, bounce, and today touched, bounce and obviously now uh this 300 area going into next week is going to be important not to the point of hey now that's it now that we're going to lose the 300 we're going to lose the 296.75 and start going back down to the lows look anything's possible I mean, we're always prepared for anything we're always um aware of where we are but the most important part is we're not guessing and, and that's kind of the message that I always put day in, day out, week in, week out, especially for the newer traders, don't guess what's gonna happen. You All of a sudden, you, every single, if you guys remember, every single rally that we had uh, when we were underneath the 50-day moving average, as soon as you get a rally, that's it, that's the bottom, that's the bottom. And, and as soon as you get, you start moving down on one move uh, after a very, very big run, and look at the volume, right? Very, very small volume on the way down versus the way up. All of a sudden, you're screaming, that's the top. It's just guessing, guys. It's guessing. It's water cooler talk. It's banter. It's people having a conversation that it's impossible to understand who's going to be right or who's going to be wrong until weeks and weeks and months, months later. So it's kind of a, it's not a, you know, it's not a proactive conversation. You're not going to get anywhere. But we do know levels, and that's the whole point. We do know levels, and we respect levels. Most important, the price action respects levels. And the reason why the NASDAQ 100 hit this five-day moving average, this is the five, right? This is the rising uh, five-day support. If you look at the S&P, it did exactly the same that as well, right? Again, stocks just don't stop randomly. Look where the S&P stopped, right? Stopped right perfectly on the five-day moving average as well. Again, if you're watching this video for the first time, the five-day moving average is the shortest-term sentiment. It's not a question of, where's the next move going to be? It's the question of who has control of the shortest term time frame, usually within that week. That's why it's called the five day uh, moving average. So going into this week, again, you know, in my opinion, you're not gonna have that, you're not gonna have that really big aggressive statement come Monday, right? Um, and I'm not long, you know, I'm not long biased or short biased going into Monday session. I, I kind of want to see how things play out a little bit because if you go through charts, just because we had such big runs and so many names, you're going to see a lot of charts are just tired. Again, so we talked about last night in the video. That's why we, again, we don't jump out of the 10th floor. We try to jump out of the first. So if we're wrong, we have a skin knee instead of a severed head. So we kind of knew where we were going into today, but going into tomorrow's action, yeah, I, I want to watch how if we do test back the five-day moving average on the queues, I want to see how certain stocks react because there, there was definitely some notable weakness today. If you look at names, for example, like Google, a buyer came in today very, very quickly today. They were coming when the stock was still 11, 12. They were coming in for the 10, 9, 8 
uh, weekly puts that expired today. And the stock got really, really hit uh, into rising support. A name like NVIDIA that had a really, really big run, you can see it kind of correlated exactly the same way it did uh, with the NASDAQ 100. It stopped right on the five day. I'm just curious, you know, what happens if they do lose the five day? Can they get one more day of selling going back to the 50 day moving average, kind of a retest? of the 50 day moving average, that's kind of on the table as well. So when you look at the cues, for example, from a macro point of view, I think if they do lose the 300 area, and again, it's a very, very big if, and again, we're just getting prepared for those levels. But if, if they do have at least one more day of back test, and this 50 day moving average comes back into play, right? We wanna see if that 300 falls, can it get back down to this 296.75 level where it broke out in the first place to see if they can trap shorts in that level to resume the uptrend. So these, these are all things that we're preparing for. And when you go into a weekend like this, and when you look at charts and you say, ah, I really don't love anything on the long side, there's a reason for that because stocks had a big run they took them down today, right? A lot of stocks got taken down today. And the most important part is they need digestion. They need rest. We constantly talk about and remind traders that stocks are not gonna go straight up. Stocks are not gonna go down, straight down. They need to rest. They need to uh, work and rework and test and retest certain levels to kind of get comfortable to see what happens next. Because again, if they keep on testing the same level over and over and over again, eventually they have to get through. Again, you're not going to defend the same level two, three times. So it's going to be very, very important come Monday. Again, not one of those do or die for the market. It's beyond that. Again, I, I see way too many people talking about this is the top. Top of what? Again, seven months of decline, three days of rally, orderly back to the five day moving at the top of what we haven't even gotten above this macro supply yet so be careful what you're saying right be careful what you're saying and you hear again you hear really weird stuff coming out of people's mouths uh well this rally for the last three days there was no cat what do you mean there was no catalyst they reclaimed the 50-day moving average well the volume was very very thin how much volume do you need right how much volume do you need look at this. some of these stocks are trading tesla Amazon, Google, they're trading millions and millions and millions of shares. How much volume do you possibly need? So look, stop guessing, stop overthinking. You're not gonna figure it out. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. The only thing I'm doing is literally taking the data the night before and trying to make a game plan based on that data. I have no idea. I'm a total idiot. No idea what's gonna happen next week, but at least we can prepare for it. And that's the most important part. Prepare, don't anticipate, right? When you have no anticipation, when you have no expectations, you have no disappointment. So you could you could literally have a day Monday and Tuesday that the that the the value, right? The value starts decreasing a little bit because stocks have to figure out, hey, was this just kind of a fluke? three, four day rally and we give back the 50 day moving average? Or is this just a little bit of gravity, a little bit of profit taking into the five day? Let's see if we can trap on the five day uh, to, on Monday morning and start resuming their rally. But I would not be surprised if we have less than value days for Monday, maybe into Tuesday session. Yeah, we'll always find something like Tesla, just the monster. We talked about Tesla yesterday. It did exactly what we talked about uh, last night. It, you know, they took down the market last night with Snapchat. Uh, everything was down. Tesla was down two, three bucks. Once this thing went red to green today, I mean, it just absolutely went nuts. So it went red to green. It took out yesterday's highs and just went right into the 40s that we talked about uh, last night. So yeah, look, is there value in Tesla? Yeah, I, I think there's value. I think there's a couple of ways maybe for to play Tesla, like for, like we talked about last night's video. This is a bad tick, by the way, on, on eSignal. Like if there's a move on Monday and they start selling it off into rising support, yeah, of course, why not take a shot at rising support, right? I don't think that was the top on Tesla, but at the same time, I could totally turn around and say, look, there's one more move up. This thing starts going green to red. It starts taking out the bottom channel and I would be interested, right? If, the, if this thing gap up, and gets rejected into today's uh, highs, I would be interested in this bottom channel because at least you could get a trade all the way back down to 787. But again, again, we want to be prepared. I, again, we don't know, we can't guess. The charts are a little bit messed up just because of the success of the market, what it did this week. So we have to be a little patient. You kind of want to scale back your activity. If you're trading on Monday, both the long and the short side, scalp. I, I don't think there's enough value to get a massive move on anything. Again, if you go through your charts, and right now, again, it's Friday, 
It's four o'clock. It's five o'clock. Literally, the market closed about about an hour ago. Um, you know, I'm getting out this update now so I can have the whole weekend ahead of me. But my point is, from now till Monday, you have news events. You have you know, you had Snapchat disappointing. You had you know, Biden coming down with with uh, COVID. The, you know, the real news is who who hasn't come down with COVID, right? So I don't think there's a big news event there. But going into next week, yeah, it's a big week, and I think it's a big week for. Uh, for earnings this week, you had IBM come out, quote unquote, started the technology uh, earnings season, didn't do well. You had Netflix, although they didn't do great, right? They didn't do great as far as their earnings report, but they lost a million less subscribers than believed that was good. Okay, that's cool, and it kind of went higher. Next week, we got a big, big week. You got Tuesday, you got Microsoft, you got Google. General Electric, Visa, Chipotle, General Motors, uh, McDonald's, Triple M, UPS, Texas Instruments. You got a lot of stuff, right? And then you got on Wednesday, you got Boeing, Shopify, Meta, Ford, Qualcomm, TDOC, Spotify, Etsy, a lot of names. And then for Thursday, we got the Super Bowl. We got Roku, we got Amazon, we got Apple, we got Intel, right? Maybe HMNY, I don't know, right? I don't know what else is out there. But the point is, again, if the we can get through this earnings season, okay, if the bulls can get through this earnings season without giving back the 50-day moving average, right, without losing back this 296.75 on the close, then I think we're going to be okay going into Labor Day. If all of a sudden everything starts imploding, right? Meta, Google, Apple, Amazon, and we're having a conversation here Monday or excuse me, on Tuesday, and we're looking at 395 on the close. Yeah, of course, we're gonna start going back to the bottom of the range, but don't guess, right? Don't guess, be an adult, be a professional, and the most important thing is be prepared uh, for the next trading day. So let me give you guys some ideas. Again, it's not that I'm bearish going into the day. Um, I just see more scalps. I wanna use the word scalp. I, I, I see more opportunities, at least for some cash flow to the downside than I do to the upside. I still think the market needs one or two days for to digest. Um, I wanna keep an eye on Google, right? I wanna see if Google, if Google starts losing the bottom of the range here, you know, maybe you could get a nice, you know, maybe we get a move down ahead of earnings. Um, you know, snow, snow looks interesting as well. Again, I know it seems like I'm at pretty much all short setups just because where they are in the range. It doesn't mean, again, it doesn't mean that I'm bearish. You know, I'm gonna watch the bottom of the channel here. It's held here one, two, three, four times. If this thing starts going down, maybe you can get three, four bucks going into the 50-day moving average. And a name like Snapchat, even though it was down today a gazillion percent, uh, the play for this thing, if it gaps up into supply, it's gonna get stuffed into supply. If it goes green to red and starts losing out today's range, you're going to have uh, more downside ahead. So that's it, guys. That's it. Really good week. Uh, I, I, I think uh, the most important part is a lot of you guys uh, not only started, but started with us um, in the bear market, right? And, and the most important message I kept on conveying in the, bull, in the bear market is, number one, this is where you want to set your foundation. You don't want to set your foundation in a bull market. It's Bull market and bear market is night and day. Bear market, you have to be really, really on the bull. Every single day, you have to have very specific prices. You have to be really... You have to be really in tune of what's going on with sentiment. In a bull market, you could, you know, you could be in the wrong price, stay it a little bit longer because the euphoria is going your direction. Again, you're getting a longer leash. So it's super important that a lot of you guys saw the bear market, saw exactly how we get navigate, but navigate like adults, right? And once you get through that area and we start reclaiming the bullish levels, this is your reward, right? This week was literally your reward for setting your foundation in a bearish environment. Guys, have a great night. God bless. I wish you all health and happiness. And with God's help, I'll see you guys all on Monday. Enjoy your weekend.